This model is a perfect example of why we hold off final judgment on a model until we get it in the sky. Because on face value, it's not very pretty. Let's be honest, it has hit a few ugly branches on the way down. The wings do look quite nice, it's not particularly big, it doesn't appear to be that sporty. However, looks are very, very deceiving and you're going to find out how much fun this model is. Howdy, I'm Matt and it's a foam day! Really hoping this is the cheapo plane which I bought on Banggood literally a week ago, even if that. So let's get straight in there and see what we've got. Ooh, underscript box. <gasps> I love foam days. You roll the random things on the internet and you never quite know what's gonna turn up. And that's the exciting thing because we've had some very strange models here at the workbench and we've had some interesting experiences. So let's get in here. Are you ready for the reveal? Because I'm genuinely not entirely sure what's in here. Are you ready for this? Ta-da! Oh, it's this one! Oh! Hello, right, this one I bought a, literally, it is the one which I was thinking of, literally a week ago. Uh, so let's get this out and take a look, which is, it's smaller than what it appeared in the photos. But actually this is going to be quite cute. The colour, just taking a look at that, uh, that's a, no that's not even a Clark Y. That bottom of the, so there's different wing cords, but that one's definitely got some sweep in it. So someone's chosen an interesting wing section. The foam is lovely cut, really nicely cut, uh, and really nicely painted on. Looks like the spray, I, I think, because of the overspill on the side. How curious, it is EPP, not EPO, which is always a good thing, and in, in my humble opinion. Uh, and what else have we got in the box? Right, let's get this laid out and take a look to see what we got. And while we're doing that, uh, let me get this laid out and I will get the details on the actual model itself. There we go. Okay, this is the Dragonfly 700 millimeters wingspan, low EPP, sorry, low winged EPP training plane. Now, actually, when I'm here looking in the photo, yeah, it is as big as what I expected. It just looked bigger in that one, but when you see it hanging up uh, on the wall, then yeah, that's it is the size which I now expected. Uh, so yes, yeah, 700 millimeters, 70 centimeters, not absolutely massive. Uh, it does come with instructions in 100% Chinese. I think I've even got that upside down. Uh, that's really useful. Uh, I'm just guessing on here, 220. It's given a t I'm looking for a CG, but we don't really have one, so we'll just guess. Right, so the centre of gravity is a bit of an unknown. I'm sure some of you are there are looking at it going, I can see that. Uh, it hopefully, ah, it is marked underneath, which looks like that's the centre of gravity. So they're suggesting the centre of gravity is on the spar, which is about a third of the wing cord, which makes sense. Right, so what do we get in the kit? We get two lovely wire cut wings, uh, which are really nicely painted. Uh, and we'll turn these upside down. I'm just thinking about the build of this. I don't think this is gonna be, I think we'll be able to cope with building this one. Uh, we get two carbon strips. I'm not entirely sure where we got two, but we do. Uh, we get the push rod, so it looks like the servos, ah, that's how we're gonna save weight. I've just been to work this out, is that we're not gonna have the servos in the tail of the model. Uh, instead, we are gonna have uh, the servos up towards the front of the fuselage, which helps us get hitched to the center of gravity, which then means we can run a smaller battery in there, which is happy days. Uh, and seeing it's absolutely, ch I've just been out with the kids, uh, and we've got absolutely slow playing miniature golf. Uh, we've come back, and this is gonna be a real nice project to, to do while we're, yeah, while it's horrible and rainy out there. I'm just looking at the fuselage. Uh, ah, that's what the other spar is for. That's to go down the tail. Is these two different lengths? No, these are both the same length by the looks of it. So mine is slightly crooked at the end. I'm not gonna hold it against it. It has been in transit. Uh, and also that's quite thinly cut as well. So if it was gonna bend anywhere, I would have suspected there. Uh, we've got a spot in here for some landing gear. So we've got some other bits and bobs there. 
Right, yeah, two servo holes. So one servo for the elevator, one servo for the rudder. Obviously, you don't necessarily need rudder if you want. You don't have to have rudder if you don't want it. Uh, let's put this together. So we've got some nice depth on, and yeah, again, nicely painted foam board. It's not bad. And it's not horrible quality foam board. Sometimes you get foam board, and look, you can see me flexing this. Sometimes you get foam board, and it's really rigid, and it's sometimes just really old foam board, and it's horrible. This isn't that bad at all. Oh, and it's nice that they've been included little holes there, so that it got it's got somewhere to give, and the hinges are good as well. Just checking out the elevator one. The elevator one is a little bit stiff, but I think that just needs working backwards and forwards. Uh, and let's just pop this together. So that would. I want, and by the way, I am just going to use hot glue on this. I'm not going to. I tell you what, let's get that spar out of the way because then we can quickly pop this together so that you could see what it could look like or should look like once we get it put together. So yeah, that tail's going to go on there. Hot glue for that, that's for sure. Uh, and let's put these wings in. Yeah! Obviously, not going to be mental fast. I didn't expect it to be, to be it never was. You just never really know what you're ordering until it turns up. Hence, that's one of the reasons why I make these videos, because you just genuinely don't know. Uh, cute is what springs to mind. Uh, that is for sure. Let's have a look at the battery bay. Ah, look. So we've got wire cut black EPP here for the fuselage, which we put a carbon strip underneath to keep it sh strength, to give it some rigidity or extra rigidity. Then for the fuselage area, what they've been and done is that, let me just take this apart so you, you can see, is that what they've been and done to, to make it easier for A, for the build and for, for us to give us better capacity, is that just about here, is that we've got more of that foam board so we can, can fit a battery in the nose and we've got the firewall at the front for the uh, well, I assume we've got a piece of plywood in there so we can screw our motor to uh, and then that gives us almost maximum capacity up here for given the restraints of the model itself uh, and yeah that kind of makes sense we'll stick our ESC up there uh, we've got a magnet glued in there so I'm kind of hoping to see that we've got a little plate of metal so that that lid clips down and yeah first impressions it's going to be cute and I think with that that wing cord let me just show you is that it definitely does have some sweep in there is that you'll see it does it's not that obvious in the camera. The nose, the, the front of the cord is coming down. In fact, can I got something straight to put against it? That's probably a better idea. Uh, in fact, let me use the black fuselage. Oh, so maybe it is. It's not so obvious, but there is a, yeah, there is a camber to the wing, which is nice to have. That means that it will get a sensible amount of lift in there. It's not symmetrical, which mean, would mean that it would fly upside down as well as it would uh, the right way up. But that one will give us some lift in there, so that's nice to see. Uh, what else do we get in here? We get our two push rods, and they are super long because we have to go from here, there's our servo hole, we have to go from there to the tail section to push our surface around. I may reinforce these with some carbon fiber rod uh, or glass fiber rod and just put a little piece. If you've never seen that before, I'll show you. There we go. I'll put some links to this in the video description. It's some two millimeter carbon rod. And all you do, if you wanna, if you've got a long, see how bendy that is, okay, is there two ways you could do this. The simplest way is this way. I, I feel is one of the, well, one of the simplest ways, which is that you, Get some carbon rod, cut it off, well, work out what the length is from the surface to where the servo is, then maybe cut off an inch either side, and then what you do is grab yourself some heat shrink tube, and I'm just gonna push two pieces on here, but you may want to use three. It really does depend on the length which you're working to. Uh, and then all you do is pop a little bit of CA glue in there between the, let me zoom in so you can see. There you go. So all you do is pop a little bit of CA glue in there, a bit of super glue, push that over the top, and then heat it up with a lighter. Just go careful because the CA glue is highly flammable. Uh, and I would probably do that realistically about an inch away uh, on there. And then maybe two or three places along the actual thing there. And of course I would have cut that 
uh, where appropriate just to give me like an inch playroom on the end and then you end up with a super strong and you see I can still flex it but it's far far more rigid than just the push rod by itself. Another method is again super easy to do and I am here just looking at my workbench I've always got you know those uh, control horns which you get extra with your servos which I'll find one you know those control horns which you've saved up like a million of them uh, for the ones which you haven't used what you can do is drill out a hole in there so that the rod is able to move freely inside and then cut that off short and then you mount that into the fuselage so that you then have the push rod going backwards and forwards but it's restrained by the hole inside of there uh, and that works out ridiculously well. That is a very uh, just as equally simple approach to strengthen up or just keep the push rod uh, being guided and depending on the size of the model you may want to use one or two as the case may be. A model this size, yes it is a long length but you could easily get away with just a single one in the middle uh, and it's not complicated, there's no special tools and you don't have to glue your fingers to it because you just literally just get a craft knife, poke a hole in the EPP foam and then whatever I just did with that uh, control horn uh, you would just cut it off a little bit short, maybe a centimetre's worth of length and then just embed it inside of the wing like that so you can now imagine the push rod getting pushed forwards, back, forwards and backwards by the servo and it's being guided by that. Very, very simple to do uh, and highly effective. Right, let's zoom back out obviously the wrong way on the camera and look else, look at what else we've been received in the box. It does come with landing gear, bit 50-50 if I'm going to use that if I'm brutally honest, uh, mainly just because the places where I fly we just don't have nice tarmac strips although maybe at home on the drive might be a possibility. Uh, so we've got two little wheels which would go on there, that's fine. Oh there's our metal plate, that was the plate which I mentioned earlier, That's we need to glue that up underneath that lid so that clamps down, in fact I'm just going to pop that on there so it doesn't get lost, again that's simple to do, I'll just use hot glue. Uh, we've got a motor firewall here, so let's have a quick look, we'll poke that out of there, yes that makes sense, so ah, it's nice that the, so is this is meant for, I'll check the instructions, it was quite a small motor they were suggesting, uh, it was an 1806 2300 kV, wow that really is a small motor. Uh, and I don't have one to hand, unfortunately. I, I know that I own one, but I think it might be with one of my flying buddies at the moment. Anyway, getting back to my point, uh, we, we would glue that into the front of the model, like so, in there, he says. That would get glued in there. We'd attach our motor to this motor mount and then screw it to there. Very simple and effective, which they've been in use. And it's the plywood, it isn't an absolute joke. It's not made from cheese. Uh, it's a good four mil plywood, which they've been in included. Uh, we've got some other joiners here, which looks like the restraint system for the uh, landing gear. So let me have a quick look. Yeah, I would su suspect that this combination, I'll need to check the photos uh, in the kit, but I would suspect this would be a combination of things to put together, maybe like so, so that you can then fit the landing gear up underneath in there. Some, oh, ah, right. Differently to what I was expecting, but this also works, is that if I can push that round and get this in the right place, there we go. So you can see how that landing gear now goes, is that you now, pop a bit of hot glue in there just to hold it in place and then you glue it up underneath here. Now like I said, 50-50 if I'm actually going to do that with this one, um, mainly because it, it just turns into a massive inconvenience and on deeper grass then it will be an issue. Oh, there's an additional piece in here, ah, that makes sense. There, ah, <laughs> all making sense. I love these kits because you start off one way with one idea of how it should work and then you kind of work it out as you go along uh, and yeah it all comes to fruition so you would put those two pieces like so. So we've got three pieces in a sandwich with that triangle piece in the middle uh, in there and this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> you literally just never know what you're going to get and it's always just really curious to see the ingenuity of different manufacturers making these things because yeah 
that is that is cool right so now you would then put the landing gear over the top and then over the top of that to stop it moving you've got this double triangle piece which would then slip in on top that's a really nice sandwich now which we've got there obviously glue all that together and then glue it up into the bottom of the model that's and that stops it moving backwards and forwards that's not a bad it that's not a, you've got to give them their due that's not a bad implementation of the landing gear for a model i have seen some absolute rubbish uh, uh, attempts at this and that's not that bad that is pretty good i think that would considering the size of the model and the weight it would be carrying this is definitely adequate for the situation i'm again i'm pretty sure i would break it but uh, that aside i think it's not that bad uh, we've also got it looks like our control horns uh, to go in the wings uh, and oh, we do have shorter push rods again that's nice to see that they've been included those parts as well so we've got a little control horns they're not control horns. You know, if just a few moments ago when I was explaining about the options which you've got to stop the flimsy push rods, they've been in including it for you. That's the same idea or same approach which they're suggesting, which is that you then put your push rod through the hole in there and then glue that into the side of your model and that's why it's got a spike on it. Brilliant. Absolutely fascinating on this tiny, just random kit which I bought off the interweb, the, the interwebs. That is very, very cool. Now, I'm guessing by them including these two angled pieces of plywood is that they are hinting to me and you that that wing should have some dihedral in it. So, uh, yeah, look at that. So what dihedral is, is uh, basically if I could get this on here and do it like so. I don't know how well that's coming out on the camera, but basically we've got the wing in a V. And by having the wing in a V, it means that the model will help self-center, which is actually a really good thing when it comes to a smaller model, uh, because it will help you as a pilot for the model to come back true. So imagine you're turning, uh, for example, and then when you straighten back up, dihedral, in other words, this V in the wing, even a slight V, which this one is, will definitely help the model track better uh, in the sky. So yeah, now, interesting that they've included these. Uh, what else did we get in here as well? That was that was really curious with that landing gear. I like that. In fact, I might even set that up just to see how it does. Two carbon rods. We have been included uh, the control horns and also, which is nice for them to include it, and that's what those screws are here for as well. There's a couple of screws rolling around on the desk. Uh, is that there's our push rods uh, for our clevises. So we would attach these, uh, we'd put the screws in the end, and that's what allows us the adjustability when it comes to uh, not only the ailerons, but also for the elevator uh, and rudder as well. Right, first impressions, I quite like it. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm now gonna go off. I'm supposed to be, it's that same old story, isn't it? I'm supposed to be over there editing videos. New foam's been and turned up, and I wanna make new foam. So what I'm gonna go and do, I'm gonna go and get this built up. Uh, I'll get the servers in it and get it ready for flight. And then we'll have a quick overview before I take it off and go and get it, fl get it flying. Uh, and then what I'll do in part two, I'll show you this one over at the flight line and we'll chuck it around in, uh, and see how it does in the sky. So with that said, with the magic of video editing, I'm gonna go and get this one built uh, and then we'll have a quick overview. So with that said, five, four, three, two, one. She's built. And I need to give you a spoiler. I may have already flown her. And we'll cover that in part two. However, let's have a quick look at the model itself. It's all I've been and done is put it together, it's not rocket science at all. All I used was hot glue throughout, literally hot glue to hold, uh, to glue the wings together, hot glue for the main spar. Uh, you'll notice there's some pins in here. I'm literally just using pins in the bottom of here so that I could break this model down if I wanted to. I don't think there's a need for you to glue the wings on. Uh, just, I've put four pins and that's worked out really well. Uh, I've put standard servos in the side, some genuine fake tower pros. Uh, I've 
glued a rod in. Now, I've got to be honest, this tail isn't that straight, and I think that was my fault, because I didn't hold it straight when I put a carbon rod down there. So when you do yours, make sure that you hold your tail straight on the workbench, okay? Uh, connecting up the servos was really easy. They come with little screws uh, in the clevises uh, to, to, so that you can trim the model in. And this model is actually, if we're looking at it right now, is actually trimmed in. Uh, if we take a look at the surfaces, it didn't need any trim as far as roll and I needed to ironically take a little bit of up out of the uh, elevator surface and you'll see there's hardly any that is completely flat uh, back there as well. Uh, I did use their supplied little wooden uh, dowels to, uh, to strengthen the actual push rod as it was going backwards and forwards. That's something which you definitely want to do. You'll see I've got one there and I've got one on the top. I don't think that was the best way of doing it, but hey, look, it works uh, for the elevator and it's perfectly responsive enough. When it comes to the motor, I went for a Race Star 1806 motor with a 50-50 propeller on the front. Now, I am actually only running this on 2S and I would probably suggest that for you too. Oh, one tiny little modification is that I did, I, I have just doubled up an elastic band on the nose that seems to work well uh, and the landing gear from my experience so far has worked out quite well uh, it's a little bit odd you do get these little brass if I show you on there some little brass covers which uh, mine's covered in hot glue because I stuck a bit of glue in there just to make sure it stayed in there you do get little brass inserts and I've just just gripped them down with a pair of wire nippers uh, so that they perform uh, they get a really good seal on there now I did lose one of them uh, and it's over there and I just put a bit of hot glue on the end of that one and that also works really well too uh, coming up to the actual battery bay itself uh, it is a bit of a wiring nest in there let me show you what I've got set up in my note and, and, and I'm I'm sure you could do this better for sure. So I have the battery, I'm using a little Nanotech 460 milliamp via 2S. Uh, now that's got a JST connector on it, so I and I set mine up with a, a XT30, so I had to make a little uh, adapter from XT30 to JST. Uh, I've got a, ironically, it's a 30 amp ESC in there, 30 amp ESC, which is complete overkill. Uh, and also that doesn't have a beck on board, so I've had to put in a separate beck as well. Uh, and then I've got a D4R2 receiver, uh, and that's my wiring. It looks a bit of a mess, uh, but it just keeps everything super simple. The only odd bit which I would suggest using, perhaps using an ESC. In fact, I'll put a link in the video description for an ESC, which is rated for 30 amps, and it has a 2 amp beck on board, so you can skip that, that whole chunk there and just literally just plug it straight into your receiver. Uh, that would be a far superior uh, uh, way of installing that. And I do have one, ironically it's in another model which I've just been working on, so I didn't fancy taking that out, etc, uh, etc. Et uh, I am only holding on the motor, and you'll see this, this hot glue everywhere, uh, just with two screws, sounds a bit horrific, but uh, that was enough just to hold that motor mount on there. It's not loads of thrust uh, at all. So. First impressions of the Dragonfly, and I think th this model is the perfect example of, and there's all the guts out on the side, this model is a perfect example of why we hold off final judgment on a model until we get it in the sky. Because on face value, it's not very pretty. Let's be honest, it has hit a few ugly branches on the way down. The wings do look quite nice, it's not particularly big, it doesn't appear to be that sporty. However, looks are very, very deceiving and you're going to find out how much fun this model is in part two. So on that note, if you're new here, don't forget to press the red subscribe button and of course press the bell notification over here on YouTube so that YouTube notifies you when the next video is out because it could quite well be the maiden of this one and like I said, spoiler alert, it does fly very, very well. In fact, I was quite impressed for something which... I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it any more than that. You're gonna have to watch the watch the the flight footage of it because it does do really well. It genuinely did surprise me, as you might be able to tell from my voice. I was quite impressed. So yeah, look out for part two for the dragonfly. Any questions, comments, let me know down in the comments section underneath this video. Uh, remember, I bought this model out of my own money for my own abuses. I bought it for some fun to fly out the front of my house. 
and that's exactly where it's going to be flown out there. It did, and, and I know I, I, I'm spoiling it. I don't want to spoil it for you. Wait till you see that. Wait till you see the flight footage. It's yeah, it did really, really well. Anyway, for myself, Matt, a big thank you to you for taking the time to join me here at the workbench, and I'll see you again shortly. Hopefully, next video out is going to be part two. Of course, if you're watching this video on later on, it's probably in the cards at the end, or just check out the YouTube channel because we will definitely have some flight footage of this one out literally in the next day or so. So with that said, for myself, Matt, cheerios!